Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi, this is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video, and today we are again on the test server, going to be taking a look at Goffred, uh, one of the new fusion champion, not fusion champions, just one of the new champions in this game. Uh, he's this little dwarf guy, and he, I think, has a really unique spot for clan boss in this game. I think he's a decent champion all around. Not going to be a game changer for anybody in any part of content in this game, but he's definitely going to be solid. Um, it's one of those legendaries where you're probably not super excited if you pull him. But for clan boss, he does bring some interesting things to the table. Um, and I'm going to showcase that in the video today. And one of the cool things is the way I'm going to be using him today. You don't need any books, which is kind of cool. Now, it's not to say that he won't benefit from books. I definitely would want to book him if I could. But you don't need them to make him work the way I'm going to be using him today. So kind of a cool thing. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at his kit and uh, see how he turns out. I really appreciate you coming by to watch this video, and if you enjoy it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. And of course, if you enjoyed today's music, we have that Soundstripe link down below in the pinned comment description of this video, along with my code, Deadwood Jedi, to save yourself 15%. And of course, if you're looking for account work, you can find that on my website, DeadwoodJedi.com. All right, this is the speed team we're going to be using today. We've got Geomancer, Tatura Rhymehide, Helicath, Occult Brawler, and Goffred Brassclad. Now, obviously, for this, this is going to be actually the fast uh, Hellcat team is what we're going to be using today. Fast Hellcat Unkillable. It's on the website. Um, but what we're going to be doing is we're actually not even going to use Hellcat's shield. Not going to use it at all because we're going to let Brassclad, Goffred, Goffred, what a weird name. We're going to let ba Goffred Bass Brassclad take care of the stun for us, which I think is a really cool way to do this. So I'm really excited to do this. So let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll check out his kit so that we can see exactly how we're using him. So let's take a quick look at Goffred Brasschild. I mean, I'm sorry, Brasschild? Brass clad. He just looks like a child to me. He looks like a kid playing grown up in armor. It's, uh, yeah. He needs a better tailor, I think. But let's look at his kit. Uh, so he's got Meat Punishment, his A1 skill. Two hit attack. First one has a 50% chance of landing decreased defense. Second hit has a 50% chance of landing provoke. Two wonderful debuffs. Absolutely great for landing for you know areas of this game. Just not necessarily clan boss. We want the decreased defense. The only one we care about. But it is really good. 50-50 shot of that is not bad ratio for us, especially on a two-turn ratio. If we can get counterattacking or ally attack, definitely it'd be up more often. But even without that, I think this is going to be a pretty good chance to land and stay up for the full fight. Now, his that's his A1 skill, right? Very solid. His A2 skill, however, is going to be an AoE hit. It's a stun debuff booked up to 100% chance to land. Now, we don't care about stun for clan boss. Can't stun it. So this is going to be useless for us. We're going to turn it off for this run. But in other content, this is going to be a great skill. Being able to CC the enemy completely is massive. And then we have his A3 skill here, Vow of the Dwarves. It places an increased defense buff on all allies for two turns and removes any decreased defense or weakened debuff from all allies. I mean, increased defense is great. Removing decreased defense and weaken is fantastic, just not for clan boss. So again, we're taking this skill out. It's not a damage skill. There's no attack in there. So for us, totally useless. But for other areas of the game, this is actually a really great kit. I mean, being able to remove decreased defense and weaken is huge because there's not many people that actually do that without a full cleanse. And bringing increased defense means we're going to be even tougher than that. He's got the stun. He's got the provoke. There's a lot to like in this kit. Just the A1 is what we're looking for clan boss. Now, I, honestly, this doesn't even feel like a clan boss champion except for his passive. And this is where I really like him brass clad right this passive ability whenever an ally is attacked under block damage buff placed by this champion has a 75 percent chance of placing a stun if you book it that will be 100 percent. so again more stuns out there but the part i like that's the passive the part i like is this active effect if an ally is about to get killed by a fatal hit blocks incoming damage and places a block damage buff on them for one turn so you know hellcat's great Blocks all the AoE damage. And then we have to put that shield up for the stun. Sometimes the shield's not big enough. Sometimes our champions taking it are have a little bit too much HP or not enough defense. And they don't last a full 50 turns. But this guy, he ain't got to worry about it. Ain't got to worry about it because he's going to block the damage for us. And this is why we can use this champion completely unbooked 
in clan boss and make it so that we don't die on the stun it's awesome so basically he's the best version of skull crusher because affinity doesn't matter he's gonna block the damage regardless the only thing we gotta avoid is actually him taking the stun because if he takes the stun well then we either have to cleanse it or we have to block the debuff on it and if we can do that that's fine but the thing is he's gonna protect an ally i don't know if this is actually going to work on him typically ally skills do have a tendency to actually work on that champion but i i'm not guaranteed on that i'm not sure 100 so that's something that you know would take a lot more testing to really find out but the thing is is like that's an awesome ability to be able to block the damage on one champion it's a four turn cooldown so we have to get him on a four three ratio and in, in this team he won't have block debuffs on him so that's definitely one of the reasons why he cannot take the stun but everybody else is going to be just fine and that's what we're going to be doing today so very cool i think so before we get too deep into this let's go ahead and look at the champions and the kits and everybody that i'm using here so you understand what's going on uh so i have geomancer in here right good crit damage good crit rate a good attack now a lot of people ask will geomancer's passive work with block damage the answer is yes he won't deal as much damage, right? It's really just going to be a bunch of zeros going up, but he will still proc the ability that's basically like Giant Slayer within that. So you can still get good damage out of him. Not as good of damage if it was like an unkillable team where the champions are actually taking some damage, but it is still a good skill. He's still going to be valuable in this. We also have Tatur Rhymehide in here to block the debuffs. Now, whenever you're going to use Tatur Rhymehide to block debuffs, you definitely want to prioritize that A2 skill. That's going to be massive for her you can see we've got good crit damage on her good defense on her i basically built her out to do damage because that's all we're really looking for here and to block those debuffs then we have helicath who's obviously the linchpin of this comp making it all work together uh 240 speed so he's going on a 4-3 ratio great crit damage at 262 enough accuracy to land the weekend at 235 and good defense now again we're not using his shield so getting his defense up to ridiculous numbers isn't as vital just more, you know more defense more damage so it's good to do but we don't have to get it to crazy crazy numbers and then of course we're going to bring in a cult brawler here to lay on all the poisons for this team and he can pretty much do that by himself which is one of the reasons why i like him so much now he's got pretty decent crit damage he can hit hard if you build his attack up and his crit damage up he also has good accuracy obviously to land those debuffs and that's going to be key and then very last we have goffred brass clad can't say his name at all but this little kid here is going to be going very fast for us right going at that 4-3 ratio now i did build this to work on ultra nightmare i'm not sure if the speeds are exactly going to work to convert to nightmare but it's basically that fast hellcat team we got great crit damage on him good crit rate so we will be able to see what kind of damage he does defense is pretty good 3600 is actually a little bit low for what i typically try to do i typically try to get these guys to about 4,000 defense is kind of my make break spot but we should get a good sense of whether he can do damage or not with that kind of crit damage on his kit and 243 actually to land that decreased defense now as we get into this fight we're not really going to be able to see brass clad's skill that passive ability activate until we get to around turn 30 ish maybe a little bit before that but otherwise we're not going to be taking enough damage before then to really you know see him in action but the cool thing is you know i can set this team to run on auto that's not going to be an issue and it's a passive ability so i don't really even have to worry about it we're not missing any attacks to utilize it it just happens so a cult brawler is probably going to end up taking the stun he ends up poisoning himself and losing a lot of health that way but it could very easily be geomancer it could be tatura it doesn't really matter because it's a passive ability as soon as they're about to die he activates it and they don't which is amazing in fact i he could take that stun that's not really a problem the only issue is that we don't have a cleanser and he's not going to be protected by the block debuff so his skills the cooldowns won't happen fast enough and then he won't get the cooldown back to block the damage again right so if we could bring in a cleanser to make him affinity friendly or just block the deep the stun debuff not worry about the affinity part we could absolutely use him as the stun target if we wanted to probably not the best choice but something we could do right um but that's kind of his thing um but we can kind of see what he does damage wise i did turn off his a2 i turned off his a3 so he's just gonna be using his a1 and you can see he does somewhere between 30 to 50 thousand damage for each hit on that a1 I, and you know having decreased defense and weaken up makes a big difference so it's probably gonna average somewhere between that 90 and 100 thousand range damage wise which is okay that's kind of like tayrell damage um it's not fantastic 
but it's not bad either. This is why I don't really think he's a great clan boss champion, but he's cool for this, and I think this is kind of a neat way to utilize him. So let's go ahead, we'll jump towards the end of this run, um, probably right around turn 30, so you can start seeing that passive begin to activate. Maybe we'll jump a little bit later since it's unkillable. We should last 50 turns. So maybe we'll jump to around turn 40 or so. So you can see that passive activate him, save everybody's life and keep this team alive and affinity friendly for 50 turns without using Tatura's shield or uh, uh, not Tatura without using Hellcat's shield whatsoever. There you go, 51.17 million. Ah, uh, that's pretty solid, right? We lasted 50 turns. That's the whole point, is he makes it so that you are unkillable for the entirety of the run. Now, Goffra did 7.5 million damage. That's more than Tatura did. They both have pretty stacked out builds, and Tatura, as we know, hits pretty hard. So that's not bad damage numbers that he's bringing to the table. Uh, nothing groundbreaking by any chance. Like, he's still half of what Helicat's bringing but still solid. So I really like Goffred, uh, kind of for this little bit. <laughs> I don't know that I'd be really excited to pull him to be honest, but he will make building unkillable teams a lot easier for you to do. So that's Goffred the Brass Clad. Hopefully that was kind of an interesting little, you know, tidbit for you guys to see, give you an idea of maybe how you could use them a little differently. Now, I think outside of this, there's going to be, it's going to be a bit challenging of how you're going to use them. It doesn't seem like one of the strongest of these champions, kind of a mediocre champion in my opinion. Being able to cleanse, decrease defense, and weaken is fantastic. There's not a lot of bosses that place that on you, though. So, I, I, honestly, nothing's coming to mind. I'm sure there's a Doom Tower boss that does it, but I just can't think of it right now, which means to me, sounds like he's more of an arena champion and that passive ability would be fantastic for arena don't get me wrong i think that's actually an ideal spot for him to be used it's the rest of the kit that i'm just like i'm not 100 sure how you would go about using him obviously the stun is massive the provoke can be really good especially with the decreased defense attached to it there is a lot to like about this kit i just don't know exactly where you're going to be able to fit him in onto your team so if you can think of that then that might be a much better usage of him you know than using him in clan boss but i saw this and i was immediately like well i know how i could use them i don't know if i will but i know how i could and i just wanted to share that with you guys so hopefully you found this interesting um you know kind of a cool little champion we'll see uh how excited people are to get him my guess is he's probably not going to get a lot of run in the game but there are a lot of really smart people that work with arena stuff so there might be some uh you know usage for him in some arena defense style teams that i'm not thinking of right now but pay attention to that and we'll see where it goes now of course uh you know we'll come back with some more videos tomorrow so don't forget to hit that subscribe notification bell and guys till next we meet i'm the deadwood jedi